In this video we're going to create an instance of the class that was developed in the last video in the playlist. In the last video we showed how we could take a Python UML class diagram, i.e. this one here, and convert it to a Python class, i.e. this Python class here. In this video I'm going to create an instance of this class and send that instance various messages to show how in fact an instance of this particular class functions at runtime. Well here we can see the actual class again and down here I've created an instance of the class and I'm sending various messages. Over here we're going to view the runtime of this particular program as I explain what happens one line at a time. This is the first line of code that will execute and when this line executes what we're going to get is an instance of the account class created and I'm showing that instance here as this circular shape which you will have seen in all my previous videos when I've been discussing objects. So this is the instance of this particular class, in other words the object of this class. Now we need to ask ourselves what will this object have? Well the first thing we're interested in is what's its name, what's its identifier. And of course if we come over here and look at the code we can see that this is saying customer is assigned the instance. So the name of this particular instance, this particular object will be customer as we can see here. Now this object is based on the class. The class is the template for this particular object. So for want of a better word, what's in this object? Well let's have a look. The first thing we can see is we're going to have the initialization method because we can see that that was declared here in the class. Consequently it'll be here within the object. The other thing we can see if we look at the initialization method is we have self.balance and self.name declared inside this particular method, the double underscore init double underscore method. So on my diagram of the object I'm going to show self.balance and self.name appearing here and here. Going on we can now say well what else does the object have? Well let's have a look at this method here defined within the class is the credit method. Consequently the object will also have that credit method as you can see. Then we can see we've got the debit method in the class and that will appear in the instance of the class as you can see here. Going on we've got the get balance method and of course that's going to appear within the object here. Then we have the get name method and that's going to appear within the object here. And finally we can see we have the set name method and that's going to appear within the object here. So when we create the instance of this class what will happen is the instance will have everything that was defined within the class as illustrated here. When this line executes it will set up the object as we've seen. The next thing to happen is this method will execute the initialization method as it appears here in the class. And we can see if we look closely at the initialization method it has three parameters. It has self, balance and name. If we come down here we can see we only have two parameters. But that's because if you remember from previous videos when we create an instance the ID of the instance, the ID of the object is passed to self. So this zero here will be passed to balance and this Rita Jones will be passed to name. And of course when zero appears here we can see the zero is assigned to self.balance and I'm showing that on the diagram appearing here. This Rita Jones which is passed to name we can see is used here in the code and that is assigned to self.name as we can see here within the animation. 
The next program statement to execute is this one here and we can see that it is in fact a print statement and within the print statement we have two messages there's one here and there's one here. Let me just remind you of the object this is the object and we can see it has this name customer. If we come back to this particular message here we can see that it has the word customer here which means that's the object to which we're sending the message then we have the dot then we have get name now what that means is that this message is going to invoke this particular method here which we can see defined within the class at this point point. and if we have a look at what this particular method is doing it's returning this variable consequently what will happen is that this method will get hold of this particular variables content Rita Jones and it will return it to this position here within the print statement then of course what we can see we have this literal string has a balance of and that will be output as well to the runtime then we come on to this which is the message and we can see that the message is going to the customer object here's our full stop and then we're going to get the get balance method invoked which is this one as you can see it in the diagram now that method has been defined here within the class and we can see it's going to return this variable here which is the self dot balance which we can show here within our diagram and of course that zero is returned to this position in the print statement consequently when we look at the runtime for this particular statement we can see it's here so this message has been responsible for getting that Rita Jones and putting it here this literal string is placed here in the output and of course this method has been responsible for gaining access to the zero and placing that zero here before we move on to the next program statement let me just remind you as to the purpose of the self parameter if you look at this message we know we're going to be invoking this method here the get underscore name method and if you look at these brackets you can see there is no parameter whereas if we go to the definition of the get underscore name method in the class as shown here you can see it is expecting to take a parameter and that parameter is being named self but here we've no parameter being passed to it now remember this particular message here generates an ID and that ID is passed to here now what is that ID well it's the identification number for the object ie this object here so it means that this particular method knows it belongs to this object it's this method here that's being invoked the method of this object that has this particular name so although this here doesn't have a parameter in this bracket we have to realize by implication this message will pass the ID to this particular position that allows this variable here to have self in front of it which means that it's getting at the instance variable for this object which we're showing in the diagram in the middle here this is the next program statement to execute and you can see it is a message it's a message to this object that's going to invoke this particular credit method and if we have a look here you can see it's taking with it an actual parameter of 100 which we often also call the argument so this particular 100 is going to be passed to here within this method so the credit is going to receive 100 and that 100 if we go and have a look at the definition in the class appears at this position and we can see it's used here in the code so that 100 is going to be added to what the current balance is and of course the current balance is zero so we're going to get a result of 100 which is going to be assigned to self dot balance and if we have a look at the diagram you can see that I'm showing that as this particular variable being changed from the zero to the 100 and as an aside just to remind you again of self here we can see we've got two parameters self and deposit whereas down here you can see I'm only passing one parameter in 
because by implication this particular message here passes to self the ID of this object of this particular instance this is the next program statement that's going to execute and if you have a close look at it you should see it is exactly the same as this program statement here however when this statement executes the state of the object if we have a look at it has changed we can see that this is still Rita Jones but this has changed from the 0 to the 100 because we've just credited the balance by 100 so it's gone up from 0 to 100 so if we now look at the output shown here you can see that it now says Rita Jones has a balance of 100 because this particular message here returned to this position Rita Jones this literal string was output here whereas this get the balance well that went to get this value which is now 100 and displayed that in this particular position this is the next program statement to execute and you can see that it is a message to this object that invokes this particular method here and of course in the diagram this method is shown here and we can see that it takes in the parameters self and withdrawal now self I'm not going to discuss but the withdrawal is obviously going to hold the 45 that was passed when the message was sent if we have a look at the method as it's defined in the class here we we can see that that particular value of 45 is used here in the code and it's subtracted from the balance which is currently 100 and of course it's then assigned to the balance consequently if we look to the diagram of the object we can see that that gets changed to 55 because 100 minus 45 is clearly 55 this is the next program statement to execute and if you look carefully you can see it is exactly the same as the program statements here and here except when it's used in this position we can look to the diagram and see that the balance has now been changed from what it was before to 55 and before it was 100 and we now can see it's 55 and of course Rita Jones hasn't changed so if we look at the output what we should see is Rita Jones has a balance of 55 and this message was responsible for putting the Rita Jones here together with the assistance of the print statement obviously and this literal string is placed here and this is a message that will go and get the balance which we can see now is 55 and that 55 is displayed here this program statement now executes and we can see it is a message to this object that invokes this particular method here and in brackets we can see that the method has this parameter Rita Hartley now if we look to the diagram we can see that this is the particular method to be executed and we can see that it is expecting to receive self and name now of course I've covered self in detail before but this particular parameter will receive the string Rita Hartley if we have a look at the code as defined within the class here we can see that the Rita Hartley is passed to this particular parameter the value of the parameter is used here and that is assigned to this particular variable now if we have a look at that variable in the diagram we can see that it currently says Rita Jones but of course this program statement will change it to the new value of Rita Hartley so if we go back to the diagram and look in this position you should see that the Rita Jones is replaced with Rita Hartley so this object has had this particular state altered as you can see and it was altered using this particular method here which is an example of a setter method this is the next program statement to execute and of course if you look at it you will note that you've seen this statement three times before what is happening now however is that when we go and use this message to get the name 
the name will have been changed by the previous program statement, i.e. this one here, to Rita Hartley. So if I look to the output, we can see that we have Rita Hartley displayed instead of Rita Jones. And of course, the next bit is has a balance of 55 because the 55 is there because the previous line didn't change that value. It didn't change that state. It just changed the self.name. If we therefore consider what we've done here, we've coded this account class and these program statements have shown that it performs the tasks that I'm expecting. Now, what do I do with this code? Well, I was just using that to show that an instance of this performs in the way in which I was expecting. So this particular class now becomes useful for me to use in a software system somewhere. Obviously, this is a teaching video and it's not that useful, but this is how we develop classes. You develop the class and then you test it to see if all of the methods you've defined in the class work when they are instances of the class. Now bear in mind, object-orientated programming is about creating the class in code, creating an instance of that class, and using that instance, i.e. using the object. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.